let's take a look at the tempo track within Studio One Three. Now, if you happen to be recording a band where there is a tempo change somewhere in the song or in several places throughout the song, and those, when you're recording the um, the band or the group, they would like to have a click track or some of them would like to have a click track to play to, and you need that to adjust while you're recording, then we can set that up using the tempo track within uh, Studio One. And even if you have a song that's already recorded, um, with MIDI and audio, we can create uh, tempo adjustments within that song as well. And we're going to take a look at both in instances. So let's just go ahead and start with how we can create the tempo track and how we can adjust it. Now I'm going to go ahead and close out the browser. And to create the tempo track, we just come up to this symbol here and open our tempo track. And now we can see that it's showing our 120 BPM, which matches our song tempo. And if we'd like to create a tempo change, then there's a couple of different ways that we can do this. I'll press F5 on the keyboard to access our transform or paint tool. And if we press five again, we then have the draw tool um, or the paint tool. We can then click anywhere within the tempo track here and add a change. So if I click here, then now we can see that that's added at 270, I believe that is. Yeah, 270. Now it raised it up that high because I clicked in this area. So if I click a little bit lower, then you can see it, it creates the tempo based on where you're clicking vertically uh, within the tempo track. I'm going to control Z and get rid of that last one here. And if you're going to use the uh, this particular method, just keep in mind that whatever you have your snap to grid, if you've got your snap to grid on, whatever you have your quantized value, it will uh, add that tempo change and kind of snap to whatever value ha you have there. So if you don't want it to do that, uh, use the second method we'll cover or uh, disable the snap to grid. And so I'm going to go ahead and control Z and get rid of that tempo change. Now the second method that we can use is we will position our cursor wherever we'd like for the change to be. And then we can click this plus symbol here. And then we add. And it just adds at the current tempo. We can also or we can come to this uh, field here and then put in a value. So I'll put in 90, press enter. And then now we've got that tempo change from 120 to 90 here in uh, bar four. If we'd like to remove any tempo change, then we can just click the uh, minus symbol there. And I'll actually go ahead and add that back in. And just keep in mind that we can come in and with the arrow tool, drag up or down to adjust our tempo as well as again using that field if we have our draw tool selected which we actually did we can adjust but if we have the arrow tool and hover we can adjust there and so if we go ahead and play this back with the click track enabled then we can hear that this will change according to our settings and then adjust down in the tempo era area here below. The adjustments that we make will remain throughout the rest of the song, so if you would like to uh, change it back to the initial tempo, then go ahead and set the cursor at whichever point you'd like to do that. Click the plus button to add, and then we can just come to the field and type in 120, and we now return back to our original song tempo. We can also come to these borders and then click and drag to adjust where that begins. And this is going to be affected by whatever we have our quantized value set to. Now let's look at the tempo track in relation to a song that's already recorded with audio and MIDI information. So we'll switch to this new song here and the tempo is 100 or 100 beats per minute and we want to change this let's say drop it down to 85 at this portion of the song so I'll click and put the position the cursor there open up our tempo track I'll click the plus symbol to add that and then I'll put in 85 okay and then so let's go ahead and play back and hear what happens with our song
Okay, so immediately when we created that change, some of you may have noticed that these audio events don't match up properly. And um, we also had some issues with our vocal and um, the choir that is being played back via MIDI within these MIDI parts here. So I've got a choir sample and another female vocal sample that are loaded into uh, an impact here. And so this is just something that I wanted to uh, show so that you can keep in mind that if you're going to work with a track that already has MIDI and audio recorded, you need to pay attention to how it's done because you can get some funky effects here. And really there's no way to go about setting it so that any audio or any audio that you're that is lengthy say like these vocals in the choir to play back correctly at the speed so you'd really need to bounce this down to an audio track now we've got some other ones here that are playing separately I've got a cello part here and this is lagging behind in, in time and not playing properly we could see that clearly but if I were to control Z and get rid of that tempo change and uh, then come to this audio track with our cello, open up the inspector by pressing F4, we can see that our tempo mode is set to follow. We actually would want to change that to time stretch. And then you also want to take note of the time stretch mode. By default, it's on drums. And drums is not the proper time stretch algorithm that we want to use for a cello. What would be better is sound or solo. Uh, solo is going to be for kind of melodic parts and we're playing one note at a time with the cello so I'm going to choose that and then if we come back and let's create our change again down to 85 and actually I just did that on the wrong portion. Okay, now we can see immediately that these are lining up properly with our bars and they should then play back. They will be stretched. So some things are going to sound better or worse. I mean, depending on what you're working with, I'm not quite sure how this cello is going to sound. But um, just know that there are going to be some limitations to sound quality and artifacts that you may get when you're working with the time stretch algorithms. So let's go ahead and play back and see how this sounds. So now that that choir sample is gone, we can hear that this is matched up just right. The drums are not a problem when we're working with these tempo changes, but if you have longer portions of audio within a sampler device, then you're going to have to take that into consideration. And so that is working with the tempo track within Studio One Three.